Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Marek Balcerzak. Uh, I'm from the Łódź University of Technology. Uh, and today I would like to say a few words about uh, my work in a project where, in which I supported Tomek uh, and Professor Perlikowski. So uh, I will be talking about the system uh, which drives the belt, which is uh, in which a PI controller is used. Uh, I know that uh, lunch is soon and I don't want to annoy hungry people because I know that it can violate my safety. So I will try to be quick. Uh, so I will uh, start with why are we doing this? Why PI not PD controller? Then I will say a few words about uh, experimental setup, about control systems that we used, about our results. And finally, I will conclude. So uh, we have a bell in our laboratory. Uh, this bell uh, can be moved upwards or downwards, so you can it can attain different positions with, with respect to axis of rotation. Uh, and uh, we want uh, this bell to uh, to swing with appropriate amplitude, with the amplitude that we select. Um, and uh, why are we doing this? Well, we want to check uh, what is an impact of the bell uh, on the supporting structure, uh, both in transient and also in the um, in the steady state. Uh, okay. I, as you have seen in the first slide, I corrected the title. Uh, I changed PI to PD. There was a mistake in the uh, in the in the title. Why is it important? Well, the problem is that imagine a P controller, right? If the signal is proportional to the error of uh, to the error of control, well, it means that if we attain the correct amplitude of swinging, then our control signal disappears. So if I have the if I have the P or PD controller, I will have the steady state error. But the integral part, it takes into account uh, it takes into account the steady state error and eliminates it. So that's why uh, PI is uh, much better in our in our application. <laughs> okay, our experimental setup uh, contains the bell itself. Um, here you can uh, you can observe uh, the uh, the drive of our of our um, of our laboratory stand. It works more or less like a free phase, free phase motor, uh, just like if you change its shape from um, from a cylinder to a flat surface. Okay, so uh, here you've got windings. They work like a stator in the uh, real asynchronous motor, and this metal plate works like a rotor. Uh, and uh, here, uh, of course, uh, we can only apply the torque uh, if uh, if stator is next to the rotor. So only in some limited uh, range of angles. And uh, to change the direction of uh, of the force, we change the order of electric phases in the system. Okay, so our first uh, system was like this. Uh, we took Arduino because it is simple and uh, we are lazy, so we uh, um, so we used it, that. And uh, we used a solid state relay to run the motor uh, and a mechanical relay to change the uh, to change the uh, order of phases. And the effect was like this uh, because. Uh, it seems that, uh, well, uh, if you buy a, a relay on AliExpress and they say it can carry 10 amperes, they probably lie. And, uh, well, the pieces of metal in this mechanical relay just weld together and we had a connection between the first and the second phase. Um, well, my, this, this attempt to burn the mechanical faculty was not totally successful, but it was closest to success so far. So. Uh, we changed the uh, the circuit a bit. We used the we used two solid state relays instead, and I also welded some uh, not welded. I created some safety circuit which uh, which imposes delay uh, when when you run uh, an SSR, but but it cuts off the uh, but it cuts off the voltage immediately if necessary. And uh, we've used of uh, such a uh, we've used of such a control system. Uh, so far, nothing burned, so it seems to be better. And uh, here we've got an exemplary uh, result. So uh, the first curve is just the angle of the uh, of the bell. The second curve uh, is its velocity, uh, and the solid one is the force applied by the motor. And you can observe that that, uh, that the force is applied uh, when. Uh, when position of the bell is close to zero, when it has maximum velocity, and of course when the uh, when the system speeds up, uh, the value of forces uh, of force decreases a bit. Okay, so uh, having uh, having our system, uh, Tomek analyzed its parameters and created a numerical uh, simulation whose results were more or less close to what happens in reality. 
Uh, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's influenced by the position of the motor. Uh, if we uh, put the motor uh, lower, uh, the, uh, the system behaves quite different when we um, put the motor higher with respect to the axis of rotation. So it has also been taken into account. Uh, okay, uh, this looks like a, a basin of attraction, but it isn't uh, because here on the axis we have the set point, so uh, the amplitude of the belt that we actually want. And uh, in the uh, horizontal axis, we've got uh, the length, which is connected with the distance between uh, the axis of rotation and uh, and the uh, and the point that uh, in which the well is attached. So basically, horizontal axis is different configurations of the of the well, and uh, vertical axis is the different set point, the different uh, amplitude that we want to obtain. And uh, here we've got the map for the lowest position of the drive. And you can, as you can observe, we can um, we can have different um, solutions: uh, two impacts per cycle, uh, four impacts uh, per cycle, one impact, aperiodic ones. Just uh, details are in the uh, in the uh, publication. Uh, here we changed uh, the position of the motor a bit. And here there is uh, the same graph for the highest uh, motor position. As you can see, they don't differ. Uh, they don't differ a lot. All right, uh, those are results uh, from the numerical uh, model for uh, um, the highest position of the motor, the position in the middle, and the, the lowest position of the motor. And you can observe that the horizontal acceleration uh, caused by the uh, by swinging of the bow. In the transient, uh, in the transient time, it's highest when when we have lower position of the motor and lowest when the motor is high. Uh, now, uh, if we if we talk about uh, accelerations in the vertical direction, uh, well, the the coloration is not uh, that clear, but we can observe that uh, that if the uh, motor is in the uh, high or middle position, we obtain bigger values than uh, when the motor is in the lowest position. Um, launching time. Uh, the launching time is defined as uh, as the time of the first impact in the bell, providing that we have already obtained 90% of the desired amplitude. That's the definition. And uh, here we've got launching times for uh, three different positions of the uh, of the drive: the highest one, the middle one, and the lowest one. And uh, of course, when the uh, when the motor is higher, uh, it takes longer to uh, to drive the bell. And uh, those are the results for the steady state response. Uh, the first graph shows the maximum uh, clapper uh, angle, so uh, so this inner uh, this inner pendulum in the uh, in the bell. And uh, well, we can cl clearly see that uh, um, it mostly depends on the set point, so the desired amplitude. And the bigger amplitude of the bell, also the bigger amplitude of the uh, of the clapper. Uh, in the second uh, picture, you can see the dependence uh, between the uh, um, accel vertical acceleration of the steady state uh, on the uh, on the position of the bell and also on the desired uh, on the desired um, amplitude. You can see that it mostly changes on the uh, uh, on the sloped line, similarly like like here. Okay, so it seems like different solutions give different uh, give different uh, vertical accelerations. Uh, and the last one, uh, horizontal accelerations in the steady state. Of course, when we have uh, bigger uh, swinging, uh, then also the horizontal accelerations are bigger. And so, uh, what are the conclusions? Uh, first of all, uh, when you lower the drive, you, you you obtain a bigger torque. Okay, so this reduces the time of launching the bell, but also uh, increases horizontal accelerations during transient. Uh, vertical accelerations during transient are uh, higher when the drive is closer to the axis of rotation. Uh, in the steady state, vertical accelerations depend on the type of solution, whereas horizontal ones uh, are uh, depend on inertia of the bell and also on the distance between the bell and the axis of rotation. Uh, the maps of the solutions in the steady state hardly change when we change the position of the, of the motor, and uh, you should not trust those devices because this causes unexpected results. Uh, thank you very much.